Right, so it's wedding day. I've just finished packing my bag and we're about to leave in about half an hour. The lenses that I brought with me today are the RF 35mm f1.8, the 50mm f1.8, the 70-200 f2.8, which is my favourite lens and doesn't leave my camera pretty much for the whole of the entire day. We've also got the Canon 16-35 f4. This is great for the dance scenes. I'm bringing my drone because I always bring my drone just for that lovely group shot after the actual ceremony. I'm bringing my Godox flash with all its accessories as well. Again, perfect for the actual dance scenes because it gets really dark in there and the flash just adds that extra a bit to the photos. I'm using the Godox V1 and it's absolutely such an amazing flash for the price. I'm also bringing my DJI Action Free because this is actually how I capture most of the day for Instagram, YouTube, TikTok to actually show the behind the scenes of what I'm getting up to. And for the cameras, I'm actually using the Canon EOS R, which is normally paired up with the Canon RF 35mm f1.8 and the Canon R6 Mark II, which is my go-to camera. It's my camera that I use throughout the whole day. And that's the camera I actually use my 7200 and the 16-35mm on. So that's it for my bag. Come along with me and see how today goes. Okay, so first things up is groom prep. I normally do groom prep because the other photographer does the bridal prep. And basically, this is just normally a nice chilled couple hours before the actual ceremony. And I normally just try and capture a lot of laughter and smiles just while they're getting ready. On this one was especially really good because he had all his groomsmen around. They were laughing, they were cracking jokes. It was just such a good vibe. They were helping each other do their ties. They were putting the suits on. It just looked really good, a lot of fun. And then towards the end, we actually went outside and they actually started playing some football and cricket as well. So it was a lot of fun, a lot of laughter. For the groom prep, my normal go-to lens is the 35mm prime with the r6 mark ii this is just nice and wide and you can get so many people in it like on this occasion there was like i think six or eight of them at his small little house so we'll then go to the venue drive there together and then that's when the groom starts meeting all of the guests before the ceremony and this is the candid time basically and this is just where i just try and get the most natural poses possible and i'm normally using the 35 millimeter or the 50 mil to actually get either a nice wide of everyone talking and having a great time or sometimes i just want to focus in on one or two people so i like to get the 50 out and get that lovely bokeh in the background of the images. I always just like to look for the laughter, look for the smiles, look for the cuddles, look for the kisses. And a lot of it is anticipation. Some of it is luck because obviously being in the right place at the right time for a group to be really laughing together. A lot of weddings overall, it is a lot about anticipation and the more and more you do them, the more you'll actually realise where the different moments are and actually how to place yourself around to make sure that you don't miss these moments. This wedding in particular, there was just a lot of fun. Like you've got this photo here of this guy who is literally looking at the camera holding the flower while the other guy is on his phone looking at a tutorial on how to actually put the flower onto the suit. On this one, they actually had some games. So they had like archery, they had a little mini golf, they had a bean bag throws into these like little holes to get points. When there's a lot of stuff like that, you do tend to like stick around them areas quite a lot to try and capture them photos. They're just fun. People, like I said, have a little competition, have a laugh, especially for candidates during before the ceremony. It's great to go to them because like I said, sometimes it can be a bit boring before the ceremony, but if there's stuff like this, like golf, like archery, it can be a lot of fun. And then once that candid's over, normally that's when everyone goes up to the ceremony, everyone's seated down and we're just waiting for the bride. This is where I get my Canon EOS R out and I use a 35 millimeter on that and that normally stays on the camera for the whole day now. And on my R6 Mark II, this is where I use the 7200. I normally stand at the back of the ceremony and just capture everything from the back. So their first kiss and when they try and put the rings on them as well. Ben, the other photographer's at the front and he gets all of the front uh, actual coverage. He can get a lot of the audience while I can actually get a lot of their reactions looking around at the audience if it's laughter or smiles. My focus mode, I have it on subject detect, but I've actually set my back button focus to eye track. The shutter button to focus, that's when I can actually focus on anything really I want. But if I want to focus on a particular subject or an eye, I press the back button focus and it locks on to the eye. I'm also on high burst mode on the R6 Mark II. Sometimes I go to electronic mode where I shoot 40 frames per second, but I realized that was too much because if I hold it down longer than two seconds, the card actually starts buffering because I think I've got 180 meg or 200 meg write speed on my SD card. We go straight back into the couple photos while actually Ben, the other photographer, mainly does the couple photos while I either get candids or I get actually, this is when I get my drone out, my DJI Mini 2 and get a massive group photo and also the venue photos as well. I would love to upgrade to something like the DJI Air 3. However, it just doesn't really make financial sense for me considering this is pretty much all I use my drone for at the minute and I can get the photos that I need. After this, we normally just go back to Candid, same as before, but apart from this time, I've got the 35mm of the EOS R and then I like to get the 70-200 out as well to get some nice close-ups of the actual guests laughing, 
smiling, hugging. This, cause this is normally when the uh, bride actually meets the rest of the guests. So they meet the groomsmen, they meet their friends. This is where I actually love the 7200 because I can get back, I can still get pretty much everyone in the photo so you can see who's laughing at who, who's smiling with who. It's just from further away and they actually don't know that I'm taking the photo. So that's when you get the perfect natural candid photos, which is what we all want. We want the natural smiles, we want the natural laughter and using the 7200, I really do find I do get a lot of natural poses, laughter with that lens. This is when we actually drag them away and do the couple photos. This is one of my favorite times of the day because we can get really creative. I can use it like again, the 35 mil and the 7200. We go around the whole venue, find nice places like the garden with loads of lovely flowers in. We try and go to like the lake as well because this venue had a beautiful lake. These ones were actually really good. Like they were just laughing loads. They were teasing each other. They were tickling each other. They were kissing. They were just amazing at doing a couple photos, which just makes our life way easier because it's just completely natural and that's what everyone loves at the end of the day. And after a couple photos, it's back to candids until the speeches. Now, the speeches is where we have to move around quite a lot because there's a lot we have to capture. I actually get the reactions from the crowd, from the dad, from the mum, from the groomsmen, all the family members. And again, it's like I said earlier with candids, it's all about really anticipation. You've got to actually listen out what people are saying, if a joke's coming up, if he says about his best man, you've got to look for his best man and then make sure you get his reaction to what he's saying because it's a lot of the time either going to be a lot of smiling or a lot of laughter. So throughout the day, you will tend to know who's who. You'll know who the mum and dad are. You'll know who the sisters are. You'll know who the brothers, the best man. So again, when they're mentioning or when we used to go on this stag do together and you just have to look over to the best man, to his best friend. If you start talking about his mum, you've got to look for his mum. If he starts talking about another family member, for example, on this one, they were talking about how his granddad's not here anymore. So you've got to just look out for his family overall and really do try and capture the actual like tears and the sadness as well because them photos really do go a long way. Once all that's over, again, it's just more candids up until the first dance and the cake cut. We took them out for golden hour first. This is when we took them down that lovely road and we got that lovely background in. You got some really nice compression with the 7200 and there was actually this nice little tower in the background, like this little castle area. Um, while the bulls get them to walk up and down. We love them photos in Golden Hour, just walking away, holding hands. The venue and the Golden Hour and the lighting was just so good. We actually brought them out three times to do couple photos on this wedding. After second lot of couple photos was the cake cut and the first dance. This is when I put on the 16 to 35 F4. I would obviously ideally have an F2.8, but I don't. But it doesn't really matter anyway, because I use my flash, which is the Godox V1. But this is actually my favorite time of the day. I love it. I think it's so much fun. Everyone's dancing, everyone looks um, like they're having so much fun everyone's loving each other and this is just the best time and normally we stay for like an hour or two just capturing this stuff everyone's loving each other everyone's dancing everyone's going mad and it just creates the best photos ever I love them especially these ones I thought they came out really really well this is when we brought them out to do them amazing sunset photos as well with the amazing lens flare with the 35 millimeter and this is just I'm really glad we've done it because it just looks so so nice that's when everyone got back onto the dance floor again the pictures come out really well the flash is amazing if you don't have a flash I really do recommend you get one because it's just so good for stuff like this it just really does make everyone pop on the dance floor Again, it's about anticipation. You've got to see who's laughing. You've got to see who's the most active people on the dance floor. People were going mental. This woman was on this guy's shoulders. This guy was just screaming. Everyone was having a good time. Even the bride cut up and started singing on the, uh, where the band was playing. The band were amazing. During this time as well, this is when there was actually beer pong set up as well. It was a lot of fun actually seeing people play beer pong because obviously it's just everyone starts shouting, everyone starts laughing, everyone starts screaming. You get some really creative shots. And then that's pretty much the end of the day after like a couple hours doing that. Normally it's like half nine, ten. That's when we call it a day. And because there's even not many people more going on the dance floor and we've captured pretty much everyone who's willing to go on the dance floor. And there's just not really any point in staying because we've captured so much. This wedding was such a great fun and probably my favorite one that I've done. And I've probably got the best results out of it. And just overall, it was great. So let me know what you guys think. Did you enjoy the video? If you did, hit that like button. And I guess I'll see you guys on the next one. See you later.